Yes, people, welcome back to Canary Cast. We are finally back as the Premier League resumes, so are we. We'll be back on the airwaves weekly, and we are absolutely chuffed about it. Harvey and Jacob join me as always. Lads, how you doing? Hello. Hello, mate. How's, how are you feeling now coming out? Well, it seems like we're coming out the back of uh, lockdown. How are you doing? How are you feeling about that? I'm just, I've never felt so tired, even though I haven't done anything for about 14 weeks. Um, and one day I will see sunlight and it's going to be great. <laughs> At least you're not furloughed anymore, but you're still in your pit. Jacob, how are you feeling? Optimistic? Pessimistic? Yeah, I'm not too bad, thanks, mate. Went out and uh, played football, uh, social distancing on uh, at the weekend, so it was lovely. Enjoying the sun, got a bit sunburned, but hey, it's just my, my the way I am, unfortunately. I hope you, I hope yeah, you were good... keeping two metres apart from everyone. Yeah, social distance in football, yeah, don't worry about that. Someone was in goal, I was having shots. D- done. Okay. <laughs> okay. Rusty or on fire? Well, what? you know, obviously on fire. A bit rusty yeah, of course. the next yeah, morning, yeah. but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Top bins. Right, lads, I suppose <laughs> we should talk about the return of the Premier League. Is it the right thing to do? Is it not the right thing to do? I mean, personally, I'm regardless, I'm just chuffed we're back and we're able to make content again and there's football to talk about because my god have I missed it Harvey I'll come to you first is it the right thing to do or do you wish that the season had been void well it depends uh, there's been a lot of aspects of it that have been positive and a lot that have been negative especially the season ticket fiasco and the furloughing of workers probably is best to bring football back it's been safe in Germany as long as they can keep the players safe uh, but Norwich do have a coronavirus uh, patient now, don't they? So maybe it's a positive a- test. Yeah, mm. we don't know who that is at this point, um, but we will talk about that in a minute. Jacob, just your feeling on being back, mate? Is it the right thing to do? Um, I can't go into opinions too long because we don't want like it's like a two-hour podcast. But um, I don't know. I'd say not really in my view but I am glad it's back and something to kind of watch and look forward to isn't it yeah absolutely Harvey mentioned the positive uh, corona test the Norwich squad have got we don't know who it is um, I mean we could guess who it is but to be honest we have, we have absolutely no idea um, I hope it's not Hanley because I believe his, his wife or girlfriend I'm not sure if they're married but I believe she's pregnant um, same with Anna Tribal as well so fingers crossed it's not either of them two um, and whoever it is, get well soon and best wishes from Canary Cast and all that stuff. Um, but do you expect, like, is it fair to expect a squad to perform under the sort of, under a teammate having a positive test and there being no fans in the stadium? Um, I believe the games are going to be at Carrow Road, but we're not 100% sure yet. Um, but it is going to be a very different environment for the players, isn't it, Jacob? Yeah, so yeah, they will be at Cow Road, but yeah, I think in terms of the Corona test thing, it is it's, for me, it would be quite scary. It kind of brings it home a bit more reality. Obviously, that the, the the only thing we know about it was the player did play against Spurs. Um, I think the only thing I could say is that those players in particular are probably better suited than anyone else in the country and better looked after than anyone else with two tests a week and and kind of uh, getting tests, well, temperature tested every day, and if they're not feeling right, you'd you'd know within what a few hours I'd imagine if, if they actually had, had the uh, the virus but uh, yeah it's probably quite scary for them especially like you said in terms of you probably looked at football as more in terms of real people uh, ironically in in this kind of break haven't you and kind of seeing that they do have an actual life like you say with a pregnant girlfriend or uh, even the young kids on on the way all that kind of thing it is worrying yeah yeah, absolutely. Um, it feels like we've been talking about sort of non-football considerations for ages, getting back from coronavirus and all that sort of stuff. But it is, I think it's finally time that we actually spoke football because we've been waiting to do it since March. And um, yeah, <laughs> it's been a while. So I thought I'd briefly set the scene. I mean, Norwich are still rooted to the bottom of the table, but with uh, with Villa and Bournemouth in the relegation zone with us. But we are only six points off safety, um, and there are three or four teams within our reach. Um, nine games to go Southampton and Everton to start which I think we I think it's fair to say that is fa- a favourable start lads yeah I just uh, home advantage does it count who knows like you really it's that's kind of the fascinating bit about it isn't it I think we'll go in depth on on the team in a bit but 
it, it's kind of almost put into no contact really because none of these players have ever actually played a, a professional game mm. of football behind with no one. So it'll be really interesting, really. Yeah, sure. Do you think being at Carrow Road is actually going to have any sort of positive effect now that there's no fans there? Because I think you see the positive effect of the fans sort of dragging us over the line on a couple of occasions this season. That's not going to be there now. Yeah, well, I don't think the home advantage will be there, but I think for for when we go away, that will be an advantage because we did seem to really be affected when big crowds are against us this season. I think that's why our away record isn't great. But it, it will have an effect. It's just, and it depends on the mentality of the players, really, doesn't it? Some will shine, some will kind of go into their shells. It will be just really interesting to see how applied they are and actually how match fit they are. Yeah. Harvey, I'll come to you. We should probably talk about the schedule change because it is more like a championship schedule now. Of course, Norwich were only there last season. So perhaps maybe that works in our favour. What do you think? I think with the gap between the last game and this game, I think it'll be a struggle for every team because, you know, they haven't even trained that long either. So mm. I think it'll, and they put in, so you have five subs now, if I'm correct. So I think it's I think, nine. So it's gone up by two, hasn't it? Has it? So I think you can play five subs in the game. But you have mm-hmm. nine subs. Okay. So okay. Yeah. I, I I would be very interested to see how much fatigue plays into it for everybody. Mm. Um, crowd wise, not so sure. Uh, it depends uh, how jarring. Like they were talking about having the cardboard cutouts and mm. <laughs> they do that. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a bit tin pot personally, but. Um, it does feel a bit like a pre-season, doesn't it? I think we'll see some some odd results, maybe favourites losing and stuff like that the first couple of weeks whilst everyone gets know, back up I to don't speed. There can be any favourites or you can't bet against mm. anyone now because fatigue will, will play a huge part in everything, but also form now plays no part in anything because you know everyone's going to be distracted for their own personal reasons. Because mm. and I feel like travel is going to be a lot more difficult for away teams as well. So I think there might be a home advantage, but it might just not be the same home advantage that we're used to with fans, etc. Yeah, great point. Um, for most of the season, Daniel Farkas had an injury-ridden squad. Um, I mean, thinking back to before Christmas, it was an absolute disaster. If anything positive has come about from this break, he, Daniel Farker has now got pretty much a full squad to choose from, Jacob. Well, yeah, for the first time, it's going to be, unless one of the, the centre-backs has that, uh, that COVID uh, test positive, um, for four centre-backs free of injury for the first time, which is incredible, really, for the first time this season. Um, the only thing I would say, like Harvey has said, in terms of fatigue, I think in the Bundesliga, like muscle injuries, muscle tears went up like 250%. It's absolutely ridiculous. And in terms of Norwich's squad, it's not the biggest, is it? Because Daniel Fark doesn't enjoy a, a big squad to work with. But they're going to have to be very well looked after. To be fair, you, you can't, I don't think any team is going to uh, be able to not have injuries in this period. Like it's an intense pre season with, with important matches. So I think there will be injuries. You've just got to be careful of how you uh, push the players, really. And I think that'll be yeah. heightened by them playing, is it every Saturday and every Wednesday? Pretty much to start yeah. with. And then it's the last couple of games are a bit different, I think. Worth mentioning that it is just Byram unavailable for selection at the moment um, through injury, and then the whoever has the positive corona test, um, if it's not Byram, is also out. Um, we, we've you've both spoken about how it'll be difficult for everyone to get off the ground. It's like a pre-season; it feels weird, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Does that mean like it's more important for us to get a really good start, especially with now we're closer to those sort of? three or four teams around us, if we can get a good start, get sort of four points on the board, six if we're lucky, that would be huge, would not, Jacob? Yeah, well, I think the where we've always kind of praised since uh, Daniel Fark has come in, like the medical side of it, and Don Magala in, in particular, like how fit we were last season, how many late goals we scored. It was simply because we had 10 times better fitness than most championship clubs. In this, this year, we've kind of found out that we're probably equal to most Premier League clubs. So it really does depend on on the players um, because I think mentally as well, they probably thought the season was going to finish. I'd, I'd be surprised if they all thought, yeah, we're going to definitely be back and it's difficult to keep training for something you don't have an end date to. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see what other clubs have done and what other players have done. But I think hopefully we'll be in, in um, good fiddle. I'd like to think so. Daniel Farkas, double sessions, etc. Um, 
we've had a long break now. Um, beforehand, um, ever since Daniel Farkas joined the club, he's never really chopped and changed his team too much, especially when we've been doing well. He has got more players available to him now, as we say. But do you think we'll see any sort of change in the lineup come when uh, come Friday when we play Southampton, um, or are we going to see Kenny and Tete in the middle? Uh, Tete and Kenny in the middle, even, and it'd just be the same team as always. What do you think? Can't be. It'll be very interesting. It's difficult to kind of almost go back to that team now against Sheffield United, isn't it? Really. Um, it all depends on who's come back the best, doesn't it? You, you're hoping to see Buendia in there. You're hoping to see your, your normal uh, Godfrey, Krull, all of them coming through fine in training. And then the re- it probably will be very similar to, to, to what we've seen recently, 4-2-3-1 and, and uh, yeah, normal normal uh, as, as we go, yeah. I think the break love it give an opportunity for everyone to sort of be seen with a clean slate, just because mm-hmm. it has been so long since the last game. And if he is going to chop and change, it probably will be now. Bear in mind, we know mm. sort of how set in his ways Daniel Farker is. It probably makes sense for him to now sort of maybe consider Steeperman again. You know, that might be something interesting for him to sort of toy with. And I don't know if Duda's loan has been extended, but I know he's still at the club. But maybe something yeah, to, yeah. to consider, you know, chopping and changing that role a bit. But we'll see. And if, he, if he's finally got more than two centre-backs, he might have a different pairing than we're used to. So we'll just have to see what Absolutely. he does. We haven't got a completely blank slate to go with for the Southampton game. We have, of course, got the Spurs friendly to quickly discuss. Um, Jacob, that free kick from Mario, he's at it again, exactly like Sheffield Wednesday free kick last season. God, it was absolute perfection, wasn't it? I think if you stuck two goalkeepers in there, they weren't saving that one. Yeah, it's a fantastic free kick. And hopefully we, we get to see him... Um, contribute a lot more than what he has done so far this season. Another goal for Dermic as well. He's in good form, isn't he? Albeit over the space of about four or five months. But Yeah, he's just an awkward player to play against, isn't he? I think we saw it perfectly when we went and watched the, the Spurs FA Cup game. He's just he's definitely not pooky, but the way the way he just kind of puts himself about, he is definitely awkward and he will get on to the end of chances. He's got a new mm. song, hasn't he? He has got <laughs> yeah. a new song, yeah. It's another banger. Shot. <laughs> Making some good money while he can. They should play them as gold celebrations. I don't know why they don't. I guess he doesn't. They're missing great. out on an opportunity there, aren't they? There's no tomorrow ringing around the carrot. That would be sensational. <laughs> but yeah, let's um let's pay particular attention to the Southampton game now. Friday night. Uh, is it a quarter to eight kickoff? Half seven kickoff? Eight. Eight. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock Friday. Face Southampton. No, sorry, pardon me. Six o'clock. Six o'clock. That's a weird time. Yeah. Pardon me. We're going to yeah, have so plenty that's of that. The early one. Yeah, so okay. the early one is six o'clock. Yeah. Okay, cool. Jacob, you tell me you've prepared a dossier on Southampton. <laughs> you've been on the road doing your scouting. Take it away, mate. It's all yours. Well, it's been a long time, hasn't it, since uh, I've done any research. So I thought I'd put in a little bit of sweatiness. So, yeah, currently 14th place, 34 points, seven points clear of the drop zone. So, probably with, with the club they've got, <laughs> they'll be fine. Um, Hassan, since the break, Hassan Hittel's got a new contract, as is Shane Long. Very inconsistent, Southampton. Beating Tottenham at home, beat Chelsea, beat Leicester, but then, and nearly beat Arsenal, beat Sheffield United, but then lose to Wolves, lose to West Ham twice, lose to Burnley and Newcastle twice. So it is going to be very interesting in terms of what, how they play normally four triple two a um, bit of a gargan press the, the famous gargan press from from Leipzig and the RB kind of uh, mould that will be really interesting to see how they kind of use that press because obviously they're not fully fit so you'd imagine that the, the full kind of speed and aggression that Hassan Hootel likes it's not going to be there but then on the other hand you could say no one else is going to be match fit so Norwich's passing isn't going to be as pristine as normal um they do struggle with two up front and a bit of a um, long ball approach, which is probably perfect that they're playing Norwich because that's the, the opposite of what Norwich do. <laughs> so I'd say if you put you could put Dermich and Puki up top, that would be absolutely ideal. But I can't see that happening. Mm. But we'll wait and see. But yeah, very inconsistent. Um, but they do have Daddy Ings, who's got 15 goals this season, who is obviously the main threat. James Ward Prowse from set pieces. And yeah, threats from all around. Redmond will be fit now. He was not going to be fit for the original game, but him and Booth Falcon, when they're on it, they can definitely cause issues. 
definitely. Um, Harvey, a bit of a, a score to settle after the return leg as well. Norwich were fairly poor that night down in Southampton. Um, remember the, the corner that Shane Long flicked in from the near post and then we never really got going. Tete did get that assist through for, uh, for Puki, but that was we were quite poor that night. So maybe a score to settle against Southampton. What do you think? I think all bets are off. Um, there's not a, a particular... You know, it's been so long since the other games. I, don't, I would imagine that a lot of the training has been away from what happened before. It will be quite fresh. It will be work on your own mm. game. However, it will be in the back of their minds, even though it will probably feel like last season to them now because it has been so long. It will be interesting to see how Southampton line up uh, and how Norwich counter that because they're very different sides. Uh, the press doesn't really work again in Norwich's favour. But I'm saying this, but this is all based on what we saw you know, 15 weeks ago. So Norwich could come out in a very, with a very different style and so could Southampton. So. Uh, one thing to note is with Hassan Hüter with a new contract, it means that they're going to start building. They're going to be more confident in their style. And also Shane Long has a new contract, so I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, a two up top from them as well with Danny Ings and Shane mm. Long. So it'll be how Norwich deal with that. Jacob, you mentioned two up top for, for Norwich um, with the sort of potential of a pooky Dermich partnership. Likelihood is we won't see that, but... There's a bit of a sort of a selection debate up top at the moment, isn't there, because of the form of Dermich? Yeah, I only, I only say two up top because, like I said, against Burnley, West Ham twice, and when Wolves switched their formation and Newcastle, all of them, uh, Wolves and Newcastle in particular, losing to Southampton at the time, switch it to two up front and they go and win. West Ham, I don't know if you remember that, but West Ham beat Southampton 3 1, and it literally was pummel it up to the top to big man Halle and Antonio, who would just run. And it is that simple because Southampton's press is basically close down the fullbacks. This is literally, I'm uh, explaining Norwich's nightmare here. So close the fullbacks. So you go into the middle and then lose the ball in the middle, which sounds very Norwich City this season. If you can't go to the fullbacks, they will go to the middle and then they will lose it. So it could be the perfect Southampton plan. And then their centre backs go very high. So that's why I'm saying two up top would be perfect because you have that, you um, challenge those centre backs a lot better. I don't really rate Bednarek or Stevens. But yeah, like you say, going back to the whole question, which I've just ignored, <laughs> um, Dermot, yeah, definitely, I'd say he definitely deserves a place up top. And with Puki, you never know. He definitely did need a, And you can never deny that he, he definitely got Premier League quality. It's just, is he feeling it? I think it was the perfect time for Southampton to have a break. They lost four of the last five uh, before the break and lost to Newcastle as well quite, quite easily. I thought Newcastle should have won more comfortably in that game. Um, but then on the other hand, like I say, they're so inconsistent. They've got six wins this season away from home, more than anyone else apart from the top four. So <laughs> who knows? They, they could come up with whatever they want. They've got good players in their team, but they, they definitely do have a weakness. They conceded the same amount as Norwich. So they, there's a weakness in that, that back line. Absolutely. Um, it's been a while. We've mentioned all that. Um, can you see any of the players that were sort of on the periphery before the break? So you're talking, or even the injured players. So you're talking Hernandez, Mario, them sorts of players that find themselves either on the bench or not quite in the squad. Do you think we'll see any of them come to the fore during the, the next nine games? I think your big one is probably Tim Closer, isn't it? In terms of, I think we've all been advocates. I think everyone is saying, hopefully we get to see three centre-backs. Because the way we play, our fullbacks are just so advanced that four in the back really doesn't work. Not in this division. Against the Championship, you can get away with it. Because they, in this league, even that, I watched the Leicester game the other day, it was on Sky, and just thought, blimey, our fullbacks are so high. It doesn't matter, even though we won the game, like the amount of chances for one long ball down the line and they're in. Um, I think I've definitely improved. The um, thing with closer hands and is injuries isn't it Close hasn't played since August that was 27 minutes against Crawley before he broke down he's 32 now as well so he's not going to get back any quicker but this will have been a good break for him same with Zimmerman I think Daniel Fark said he would have been probably out for the season if um, this the season hadn't been suspended so I imagine it'll be four at the back but I wouldn't be surprised in the coming weeks if everyone's fit to see five at the back potentially Harvey, what do you think about a formation change at this stage of the season? I know it feels like a new season, but nine games left. Is it worth the formation change? Well, he's got a fully fit squad, so you know, no time like the present. Um, mm. But I think the added of the five substitutes means that probably every squad player will at least appear. 
it'd be interesting to see if he does um like we were always saying go to five at the back like you know it suits the squad and it probably would need to happen because of you know, how leaky the defense was yeah. with just um hanley and godfrey if you as i said before if you're going to try you have to try now but it'll, it'll depend on what injuries come forward uh, you were saying about 250 percent more muscle injuries that doesn't favor a lot of the elder versions of uh, the squad at the moment so we'll have to see we'll have to see but if, if it was me i would definitely switch to five at the back and i just don't know if i'd go for the wing play because that's only going to exaggerate more injuries mm. so but when if we do change that to that formation though it's like it's, uh, arguably our best player buendia is then playing in a new position like is that a great shout when survival's on the line i think you have to bear in mind that having him in the squad will be more beneficial than having him injured so by yeah, moving yeah. him forward in or moving him to the side into a sort of midfield central role i think you'll probably have the same amount out of him but the risk of him you know sprinting down the wing every two minutes is, is reduced so i think you have mm -hmm. to sort of meta game it a little bit in order to say your strongest position is the wing, but would rather have you than not. Yeah, I personally think we'll see exactly the same setup as we saw before the before the break. I think Daniel Farker is so loyal to the players that have done well for him or done the best for him. I, I think it, I don't think a break of months will make any difference to that. I think he'll he'll play it how he's been playing it all season personally. It would be classic Daniel Farker to have a fully fit squad and play the same squad anyway. Jacob, can you see that happening? Yeah, unfortunately. I, well, I say unfortunately. I think we've kind of highlighted a key weakness in Southampton, but we don't uh, play teams uh, to exploit their weaknesses. We play to enhance our our advantages, our our strong points, which is four two three one, pass the ball around, which is yeah. essentially what it is and has been for what three years now. So I'd imagine it will be that. I'd be very surprised if it's different, really. Mm. Yeah. I mean, this is an impossible question probably, but how do you actually see the game going on Friday? Are you expecting a, a positive start or a sort of a drab affair, maybe like a nil-nil, one-one? It's, it's very difficult. I'd say you could arguably say it's the perfect time to play Southampton in terms of they are not going to be match fit to play the style they want to play. But then you've got Danny Ings, who's instinctively good at scoring goals. You've got 15 goals in the Premier League. You don't get up for... For, and he's not got fantastic service he's got okay but in that squad to get 15 goals is pretty good um, Redmond being back for them is going to be a big key point I think I think without him they do lack certain players I, I think Gineppo's suspended as well because I think against Newcastle he got red carded so I imagine that will be upheld um, that's a big miss for them because he would have been real danger against us but then you've got Buffal who is well on his day he can beat anyone um, in terms of how the game's going to go I, it's impossible to say, mate, to be honest. You'll know, I'd say, in the first five, ten minutes who's better equipped in the game and then I'd be able to give you a score prediction. <laughs> um, but I'd say... I think it's a perfect time to play Southampton. They've got a leaky defence. If you play slightly against their weaknesses, which hopefully we do, then I can see Norwich potentially coming out on top. Mm. Harvey, how do you see it going? Uh, which way the wind blows, you know, yeah. <laughs> it, it, could, it could go absolutely either way. If I was to stick money on it, I'd probably go like a two all draw because mm -hmm. everyone's going to be rusty, especially the defenders. So I'd say probably yeah. more goals than not. Yeah, that was my shout. Score draw, two, two, three, three, something defending all over the shop, but yeah. just get a point. Um, I think we've covered as much as we can on the game itself. Um, but if we look forward a bit now into sort of we've got we'll just look at the fixtures coming up. We've got four confirmed at the minute, haven't we? We've got um, Southampton, Everton, Arsenal, and then United, I think that's the order, or United Arsenal is the first four, something like that. Yeah, Jacob, United what sort of Arsenal. Yeah, what sort of points return are you are you expecting from that? So obviously United are in the cup. Um phew, Southampton, Everton, then Arsenal, to be fair. I think you could easily get Arsenal. We showed that in the home game. And without the crowd, then it's a different game. Bit of a bigger pitch, the Emirates. Oh, 
but then to this team, this is an impossible question. Uh, <laughs> um, it's not an easy point. task today. Like you can't, we can't really do anything. No, no, so it's a completely pointless podcast. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, the thing I've looked at recently is more Norwich and their bottom when Leicester were bottom before their famous title win. Like both 29 games, both seven points uh, adrift. Um, no, uh, Leicester went on and won seven out of their last nine games. They were very close, like Norwich in games, but they just scored a lot more goals. <sighs> And like I say, they went on to com- comfortably stay up. It, Norwich need at least five wins from their last nine. And that will still get on to 36, which is, is that enough? I, I don't know. Um, to be honest, you've got to go into every game. You need, I don't even know if four points from three games is going to be good enough to, to then cement a can we stay up challenge. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to say four points. That's me being yeah. optimistic. Probably. I think I'd agree. Four points. Yeah. I mean, Jake had mentioned got, that you. Sorry, go on. No, I was going to then going to say then you got Brighton at home, Watford away, and then West Ham at home. Which again, you you could. Big games. All, I'd say to be honest, a lot of these Norwich games are you can potentially beat teams apart from I'd say Chelsea away and Man City away are going to be uh, the ones where who on earth knows the other games are tricky but potentially winnable. Norwich have got favourable games, but. It just depends how they come out, doesn't it, from, from this break. Harvey, Jacob mentioned that the United game is a cup game. Um, with the fact that we're squeezing nine league fixtures into such a small amount of time now, do we think that we'll see teams sort of not give up on the FA Cup, but take it less seriously? And if that's the case, have Norwich got a shout of actually achieving something in the cup? I think you'll be... Daniel, Daniel Farker will be up for it. He loves the cup. I think everyone will be. Uh, I think everyone's going to be well into the cup, especially uh, teams like United, because that, that, that's their business. And, you know, no virus is going to stop them trying to win things. And mm. they have a good squad. They have a young squad as well. So it wouldn't surprise me if they put a full strength team out for that game. However, it will be seen as a bit of an unnecessary expense as well. Bear in mind, it's sort of the league position they're in. They'll want to get as high up as they can for next season. So is the cup going to be the primary focus for them? Probably not. But it's not going to be that much of a secondary one that they're going to not put out a full team against Norwich. Jacob, it would be typical if Norwich won the cup and none of us were allowed to go to Wembley and watch it. <laughs> I guess that was literally taking the word dry out of my mouth. It would be typical of Norwich, wouldn't it? I'd say um, probably, but I don't know, kind of rewind. Man, you were in very good form before the, the break. Um, I know they do that now of Rashford and Pogba back, but again, that's going to take them a little bit of time just to, I'm fascinated to see how they work Pogba and Bruno Fernandes into that team, by the way. I don't know how they're going to do that, but um, we'll see. Um, yeah, it would be typical Norwich to go and go at least semi-finals and potentially final, and none of us be able to see it. <laughs> cool. Um The other thing I wanted to discuss before we sort of begin to wrap up is the fact that there's now an issue where players who were contracted until the 30th of June, which is only 15 days away, it's not long, they, those contracts will be extended to the end of the season. But I think, I mean, Ryan Fraser's in a bit of a dispute at Bournemouth, isn't he? However, at Norwich, we've got no players out of contract. That's, some, that's good squad management, right? Yeah, we're the only club, only club in the Premier League not to have a single player out of contract at the end of the season, which... I think it's very good. It kind of ties down people's focus. But then again, you could argue the people who are out of contracts at the other clubs have a different focus in terms of putting themselves in the shop window. It's a difficult one. But like you say, everyone's, I think with Norwich, and we literally are the only ones, you can say every single player is in the same boat and the same focus of trying to keep us up. Yeah. Do you think that will have any sort of positive effect on the outcome of the end of the season, Harvey? Do you think that's all, we're all in the same boat I attitude think- will benefit us? If you remember back, Buendia was obviously looking at the shop window as well. Mm. I don't know if that position will have changed. But it depends what happens past this point. But the good thing is with Norwich's situation is that each of those players now don't need to do that. They always have another season. It just depends on, you know, if things start to go a bit topsy-turvy at Norwich, you know, they have to win, what, six of the next nine to Mm. have a chance at staying up. 
I wonder if that will start off as a very positive thing to have everyone in contract and by the end everyone's just putting themselves in the shop window. Yeah. Okay, the final impossible question we're going to ask you both. Are Norwich going to stay up? Yeah. Well, did run a poll and 55% of Norwich fans think we will. <laughs> that's, that's someone, they've changed their tune over the break. The break's gone, given everyone a lot of optimism, hasn't it? Um, in terms of looking at how many games we've won this season, how many games we've got to win this season, it seems like an impossible task, to be honest. So a, a task too far. That's a lockdown delusion. Like, they haven't seen Norwich play in a while and they've forgotten how... I don't want to say bad, but <laughs> poor quality it was. It was, yeah, no. In fact, if they do, I'll dye my hair yellow and green. Okay, I'm holding <laughs> you to that. That will happen if we stay up. You're going to have to do that. But, um, I mean, personally, if we get to at least four points from the first two games, I fancy it. I'm jumping on the bandwagon. But until then, unless, I, unless we see a really positive start in the first two or three games, I can't see it myself either. But well, the thing I'm not is, giving the up thing hope. Is we, we've scored the least amount of goals in the league. So we're joint least with Newcastle and the only thing about Newcastle is they can defend a little bit better because they've got a little bit more uh, <laughs> Brexit tactics but uh, <laughs> so we're going to have to score more and we're going to have to stop conceding because we conceded 52 goals this season which is just too many too many to stay up and too few to not score to stay up again so there's going to have to be a change there one way or another and like I think uh, Harvey was saying earlier the defending, <laughs> defending could be quite rusty in terms of what we see but It'll be really interesting. It's just going to be an absolutely interesting one-off. We'll never see this again, will we? Let's be honest. So it's just going to be absolutely fascinating. I'm really looking forward to seeing how different the, uh, the, the kind of style is and, and everything, really. I think it gives Norwich a complete chance because every game is actually just a one-off. You can't, This will never happen again. So you can't say there's an advantage to any team, to be honest, when you play them. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see if um, players that are a little bit out of form, uh, like Steepham, for example, with no crowd pressure... Uh, pretty much just the game to focus on might perform way better. The one player I can think of that might benefit from that is Joel Linton at Newcastle. I wonder if he mm. suddenly, with no pressure of his own fans on his back, he might perform well. But I think it might be if it means that Daniel Farker can lean on his squad a bit more because more players aren't worried about being in form, they're just worried about performing. It mm. might actually really benefit Norwich. That's a great point, in fairness. I think that's most of the, the football topics covered for this week. I mean, look, we are playing a bit of a guessing game in fairness. But, have we, lads, look, Jacob, what's going on on socials at the minute? Is anything going on over there? Well, it's going to be quite just nice and refreshing to uh, not do throwbacks, I think, for a while, won't it? <laughs> I'm actually looking forward to kind of, uh, it's going to, uh, this will change my tune after it's Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday all the time. But uh, this Friday, I'm looking forward to just kind of live tweeting the whole game. <laughs> it's going to be very enjoyable. And I think... The Bennett end, I hope to see it more. I hope that the majority of the games are free to view for everyone. Because I know season ticket holders have been told, oh, you can have a code, whatever, or you've been refunded your, your money. But it won't be the same, because it'll never, it can never be the same as going to watch your team. Well, I was just but, looking through the um, fixture lists, and Norwich Everton's on the BBC. God, you would never have seen <laughs> that a couple no. of weeks ago. BBC have... No, it's mad, isn't it? Yeah, BBC have been giving games for the first time. It's mad, like you say. Um, obviously, uh, uh, the game on Fridays on Pick, I believe. So that's a free view channel which you can you can watch as well. So hopefully, we get to see a lot of them because why shouldn't we? It could be a, a massive run in, and for everyone to watch, it would be would be great to galvanise the kind of the whole city, county, blah blah blah. blah. Completely agree. I think we'll wrap it up there then, lads. We've um, we've covered everything we wanted to cover. So unless you two have got anything else you want to say, we'll, us, we'll sign off. I'm all, all good? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, just just uh, thank you if you've listened this far and we'll kind of be bringing out more uh, as we can now, won't it? Probably be more weekly and back to a bit more normal and kind mm. of see what we can do from there, really, and hope to see a, a Norwich victory if we speak about it on Monday. Again, yeah, as well. We've all waited long enough for it to return, so we might as well all jump on the, uh, the bandwagon now and make the most of it. Um, but thanks, as always, thanks very much for listening. Um, we will be back with you next week, probably Tuesday. Um, like we said, we're not sure on scheduling yet, but we will be back weekly. Don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, um, congratulations that you've made it through lockdown and here's to Norwich <laughs> staying up. Thanks for listening. See ya. Later on. <laughs>